Hey, welcome back. My name is Sushant Sutish and I am your trainer for this Azure Data Fundamentals which is DP900 certification examination course. In this video, we are going to learn about how to deploy relational database offerings in Azure. And let's look at what are the learning objective on this video. We will learn about how to provision relational data services, how to configure relational data services, and we will explore some basic connectivity issues as well. And finally, we will touch upon how to explore data security. So without wasting any more time, let's get into it. So before we move forward, I just want to explain to you what is provisioning. Provisioning is an act of running series of tasks that a service provider such as Azure SQL Database performs to create and configure a service. Behind the scenes, the service provider will set up the various resources which is disk, memory, CPU, network and so on required to run the service. You will be assigned these resources and they remain allocated to you and charged to you until you delete these services. Let us understand what do you need to configure relational data services in Azure. First, let's look at the basics. You need an active Azure subscription. Then you go ahead and create a resource group. Then you create a managed instance or a database based on the server name what you give. Provide the admin login password, select the right region and select the compute and storage and you go to the next step. Next configuration is network connectivity. This is where you configure the VNet, firewall rules, connection type, etc. There are some additional settings as well where you can decide the data source, server collation, time zone, etc. You can absolutely create tags for these resources. And the final step is to review and create. After the validation, Azure will start creating these resources for you. Alright, so now we understood what are the basic things we need to set up the Azure SQL Database instance. Let me take you through a walkthrough to show you how you can provision and create an Azure SQL database. You can navigate to Azure by going into portal.azure.com. Provide the username and password. And now you are inside the Azure portal. You can basically create any resources within this portal. Resources like virtual machines, storage accounts, networking, etc. So for this demonstration, I'm going to create an Azure SQL database. You can go to all services and search for databases and you would be able to find Azure SQL. As you can see that I don't have an Azure SQL database. I'm going to click on create an Azure SQL resource. This will give me an option to create either a SQL database. Is it a single? Elastic or a database server. This is what we have learned. And then we have an option to create a SQL managed instance as well. Or if you do want to host an SQL on a virtual machine, which we learned in the previous video, you have an option to create that as well. Wherein, if you notice, you can use either a free SQL server license or bring your own license as well. For this demonstration, I'm going to create an SQL database, which is a single database. So click on create. By default, you will have a subscription. Most cases, you will only have one subscription. So select the subscription. Choose a resource group where you want to place this database. You can either select an existing resource group or you can create one. So I'm going to create a new resource group. I'm going to call the, I'm going to call the resource group as DP900. Click OK. And enter your database name. If you have a server already, you can select that. In our case, we don't have a server, so I'm going to create a new database server. So provide a unique name and enter the administrative credential. And you can select the location where you want to host this database server. I'm going to go with East US. Select OK. Now you have your server ready. This is where you can make a decision. Do you want to make this a single pool or an elastic pool? If you select an elastic pool, you have an option to select an elastic pool or you can create one. I'm going to keep it as single. From the compute and storage point of view, this is where you can configure the database and choose which tier you want to take. 
So we have options like basic standard premium and vCore model as well. So I'm going to go with a standard plan. DTU is where I can customize the processing unit, which include the memory, processing power, and the CPU, which is allocated for this database. If you want to know more what is DTU, you can click on this link, which takes you to your Microsoft doc, which help you understand how you can compare the DTU based service tiers. So maximum of 250 GB is the storage size, which is allocated for this database but you can decide how much storage space you want and hit on apply. Click next to go to the networking tab. This is where you can define how do you want to give access to your database. You can either expose to public endpoint or you can expose to a private endpoint and you can define the private endpoint here. In my case, I'm going to leave it as no access. Go to additional settings. This is where you can configure. Do you want to have an existing data source? Uh, do you want to do you want to have any backup or do you want to include any sample database as well? So I'm going to include the adventure work LT sample database. Next to tag, I'm not, I'm not going to allocate tag, but this is where you can allocate tags as well. And hit on create. The whole process won't take more than a couple of minutes. Looks like our deployment has started. So you can review the progress of the deployment on this page. So looks like our deployment has been completed. You can click on go to resource to straight away take you to the Azure SQL resource. As you can see that our database is created. Under the overview tab, this is where you can find the database details. You have plenty of options to configure a lot of things. If you want to connect to the database server, you can select, you can select the server name and you can straight away go to your SQL management studio and connect to your Azure SQL database. Before connecting, let me give you a quick tip. You go to the set the server firewall and this is where you need to add your client IP address. So click on add client IP address. Basically that lets you add the IP address of the local machine. And then once, once you hit and save, then you would be able to connect to the database from your local machine. Another way of accessing the database is to go to the query editor. So I'm going to sign in with the username and password we created for the server. As you notice, I can't log into the server because my client IP is not added. So I'm going to go back to the overview tab, set the server firewall, add the client IP, and I'm going to save the settings. Looks like my details is been updated in the firewall rules. I'm going to go back to the database and go to the query editor and provide the password for the user. So now within this, you would be able to access the tables. And from within this portal, you would be able to now run the query or you can go to the tables to view the details as well. So that's a quick demonstration on how to create and provision an Azure SQL database instance. All right, so that concludes this lesson. In the next video, we're gonna learn about how to query relational data in Azure. So we'll see you in the next video. Till then, take care.